Jesus was able to sum up such a wide and expansive life, such a controversial and some would say threatening ministry in two small symbols. In two symbols, he captures the very meaning, the essence, the mission of his entire existence housed in human flesh. All right. The two symbols, the bread and the cup. All right. Of all symbols that could have been used, it was these two. That in the waning moments of his occupancy in a human tent, that he decided he would point to. Right. And he pointed to them to disclose the spiritual meaning in his life, to explain his death, yes. and to cast a vision for the future. All right. All right. The bread, the bread, and the cup. All all right. Right. Of all symbols that could have summed up the meaning of his life, mm -hmm. at that moment, yes. he clearly understood his person. Yes. Right. His purpose so acute, so spiritual, yes, sir. that he didn't need any other symbols. Lord have mercy. Not a sword. No. All right. Not a job. No. Not a spear. No, sir. Not a sheep. No, sir. Not even a crown. No, sir. Not a throne. All right. Not a ring. No, sir. Not a word. No, sir. No liturgical vestment. All right. None. But Jesus defines his life yeah. with these two symbols. Yes, sir. Right. The bread. The bread. What is it? And the cup. And the cup. Yeah. Right. He gathers his disciples mm -hmm. to share that final meal before his crucifixion. The scene is set in an aura of solemnity, mm -hmm. an aura of anticipation. Yeah. He and his disciples are reclined mm -hmm. together at the table, and the flickering lights of candles casting a warm glow on each of their faces. And as the meal begins, Jesus takes the bread, and the scripture says he blesses. He blesses. His voice ringing out with reverence and gratitude, no fear, no hesitancy in his voice at all, despite knowing what is to come. The yeah. aroma yeah. of freshly braised bread yeah. fills the air. Yeah. The disciples can practically taste the warm, soft texture of the bread. Mm. And then with a gentle gesture, Jesus breaks the bread hey, hey, hey. and he passes it around the table. Yeah. Disciple taking a piece with reverence and with awe, and while receiving the bread, they're gazing at the master, no doubt wondering what could all of this possibly mean. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus then takes the cup. Show This is cup of wine, its color reflecting the vacillating light, and he blesses it. Show yeah. yeah. The rich head is set of the wine, no doubt filling the room, and the disciples mouth of watering as they anticipate the first taste. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't y'all look strange. Y'all know how it is when y'all look at this at the house. And with the song of God, Jesus, Jesus passes the cup. Yeah. Yeah. They take a sip of this rich velvety libation and it is then that the Lord quickly attaches meaning to this significant moment. Yeah. Yeah. He decides to connect it to the gravity yeah. of what is to come. His voice is impressively yeah. strong. He's calm. He's steady. But with an underlying sense of the yeah. urgency, no doubt the sorrow as he prepares his disciples for what lies ahead. Yeah. 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 It isn't it easy to see? Mm. Sure, sure. It's just yeah. self-evident. The beauty and the complexity of human emotion, the sorrow of loss, and yet the anticipation of new beginning. Yeah. Yeah. The joy of such a shared moment, and yet that meaning that it is attached.
statue that has all of, of humanity hanging in the back. Yeah. The balance between the need to keep offering the blood of bulls and goats and having the blood of this unblemished pastoral lamb offered once and for all and all the while. For the atoning sacrifice, securing forever forgiveness for the sins of humanity. I return to the king. Too small, too simple. That when in the hands of Jesus, yeah. they take on such a powerful need. Yeah. It is during this implementation, implementation of the service uh -huh. that Jesus has chosen. Yes, sir. That the first verse of chapter 13 tells us yes. that. He is interrupted uh -huh. by implementing these symbols. Yes, and he is interrupted because John tells us mm. that his disciples at the table yeah. have thrown in their time. Yeah. He's, he's interrupted because they thrown in, thrown in their, their time. John makes it. Uh, writes this book called Megatrends. Yeah, right. And he is predicting that our nation is moving yeah. toward a service economy. Oh, no. Service economy. All right, all right. Uh, we all like good service. I love good service. Yes, I, 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 I do. I, I love good service. I, I love going to places where people are happy that you're here. Yeah. Yeah.
until you understand that serving has nothing to do with who you think you serve.
how indifferently he is in this respect of Christ. Uh, he's trying to say, I see the uh, incongruity of who you are and what you're doing. And so he's, he's protesting, but he didn't offer to take over the No, no. <laughs> Because the protest was false oh, humility. Yeah. He said, why are you doing this? And, 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 and why do you do what you do, Lord? But it's false humility because people who have false humility, y'all don't recognize but don't look at them. They always ask questions but never offer assistance. <laughs> No 
Yeah. 